Support for Extraordinary Indiana comes from Duke Energy, working with local and state economic development partners to attract businesses, create jobs, and strengthen the community. Learn more at duke-energy.com slash for you. Hello, I'm Laura Sheets. Welcome to Extraordinary Indiana. Today we're examining Carmel. Located due north of Indianapolis, Carmel has experienced explosive growth over the years, transforming from a small bedroom community in the 1960s to the fifth most populated city in Indiana today. The town was named Bethlehem when it was first platted in 1837. The original settlers were Quaker farmers of Irish and British descent. The community's name was changed to Carmel when it was incorporated. The town of Carmel experienced slow but steady growth for the next century with a population reaching 1,442 in the 1960 U.S. Census. In the 1960s, Due primarily to concerns about the negative impacts of busing on the public school education in Marion County, many of the surrounding communities saw an influx of Indianapolis residents in their population. In 1974, a town referendum decided it become a city. Jane Ryman got her first taste of politics when she went door to door, registering people to vote on the east side of Keystone Avenue as development came through. She listened to citizens' concern and was able to find out what issues were on their minds. She was elected to Carmel's first city council. She co-chaired the Citizens Against Paramutual Committee, a grassroots organization which successfully defeated a proposed racetrack just north of the city in 1978. She was elected Carmel's second mayor in 1979 and oversaw the planning of growth during a period of a rapid expansion for the city. Well, I went door to door in 19, beginning in 1968 to register people to vote. There were 17,000 people in Carmel at the time. And they were very proud of strict zoning. Even in those days, the town board had done a tremendous job. The other thing I want to tell you about is my trip to Chicago. The Environmental Protection Agency had been in operation probably about three years. And I took the city engineer, consulting engineer, and the attorney, and the four of us drove up, and we had a day-long meeting with him. They commented that I was the first mayor ever that had come to them. And we asked them, what do you need for us to do so you won't fine us? And uh, we actually brought the lines for sewer and water from Westfield, Clay Township, Fishers, and Carmel. And that took about three years. So I lived in the sewers, I always say. <laughs> what led to the creation of the business district then along Meridian Street? I give the plan commission of the city of Carmel the credit for uh, developing that and studying that. And they created a, the business and the professional building corridor that you see today. And I call it the Miracle Mile. And it's a second gateway to beautiful Carmel. You know, Jane Ryman served as mayor in the 80s, and Carmel was much smaller, but she was critical in getting some of the basic infrastructure in place, making sure that the city grew uh, properly. She also, in, in her plan commission, the people she appointed during that time were, were, were so instrumental in making sure we had the US 31 corridor designed properly. As a result, we got this great business tax base that many other suburban communities don't have. And it was those decisions made back in the early 80s that have uh, served Carmel so well over the years. As Carmel's transformed from a small town to a large city, many of the changes have been unusual for an Indiana community. How has that come about? One of the things Mayor Jane Ryman taught me when I was first running for mayor in 1995 was you've got to knock on doors and ask people for their vote and then listen to them. Listen to what their hopes and desires are for their community, their city. And we did that. And I heard that people wanted a downtown. They wanted a place to show off when their friends and relatives came. We didn't have that downtown. They wanted parks and trails. We heard that they wanted to be able to go out for a dinner and a show and not have to right here in Carmel, not have to leave town. So we took all these ideas that thousands of people gave to us as, as I did this door-to-door -door work 
Uh, and, and that's what's guided us over the last 20 years, trying to implement the things that we hear from the community that they want. We'll take a closer look at some of the major industries here and some of the entrepreneurial firms which have grown up around those businesses, the quality of life amenities that took shape, and the intentional planning that has allowed for Carmel's growth. I'm Eric Doden, and I'm here with my friend Mayor Brainerd. Mary, you've really set a standard of excellence around the state for how to use tools and produce amenities that attract and retain talent businesses. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Tax incremental finance, sometimes abbreviated as TIF, is the best tool we have in our toolbox as mayors to try to, to really help our cities get good economic development. Carmel's population has continued to expand at a record rate. Today, it's nearly two and a half times the size of Carmel in the year 2000. Two key questions we'll explore is how has the city kept pace with its growth and how does it finance that growth? Some critics, however, have expressed concern about the amount of debt the city has taken on to finance its growth. Is it sustainable? Is the city's plan fiscally responsible? We sought out Bruce Donaldson, an attorney with Barnes & Thornburg, who is an expert in city bonding issues. The basic idea of TIF is that there are areas of your town that are not developing, the private sector, for whatever reason, is not choosing to invest in those areas because there's some kind of obstacle and there needs to be public investment in the area to make it happen. And so essentially the new development pays for the itself in a sense and the idea then is that you bond off of that, you borrow the money up front, invest in the area with what's needed, and then you use those new property taxes, incremental property taxes, thus tax increment, to pay off those bonds. It's a great tool for local units of government in Indiana. Corey Meyer is an urban planner and executive director of Carmel's Redevelopment Commission and works with the city and private developers to facilitate Carmel's growth. Can you help us understand why it's called the Redevelopment Commission instead of the Development Commission? Our office helps to facilitate redevelopment parcels that have already been developed. Our primary focus is in the central core of Carmel and so by having that geographical focus we're able to partner with developers to improve our walkability and create a mixed-use environment and all of those things lead to a great quality of life. By having a great quality of life that brings in businesses, uh, office headquarters, and in the end that brings more people and more people, more businesses, create an opportunity for us to have an attention to detail in creating unique spaces in a central focused area and that's why people want to be in our Carmel Core. So Corey, can you give us some examples of, of projects that have used TIF? Yes, the City Center, Arts and Design District, Clay Terrace, and the Palladium. One of the key city's building partners has been residential and commercial developer PECOR Investments. PECOR was founded in Indianapolis in 1987 by Gerald Pedigo and Bruce Cordingly. They expanded and built their company's headquarters, PECOR Square, in Carmel in 2005. Bruce Cordingly has worked on a number of TIF projects in Carmel. Developers typically have to do a lot of infrastructure to pull off a deal, and this includes utilities, drainage, and we try to get a higher density in the urban districts, redevelopment districts we do, and that typically involves some kind of structured parking, which to make it work, we basically need the TIF tool. But also the city who's issuing, or the county who's issuing the TIF, can basically come to the table and sit with us as a developer and ask more of us than they could if they were just in a zoning, just wearing their zoning hat. They're there with some money and some checks and, and, and they're entitled to basically be a partner in the, in, the overall, in the overall enterprise. So the cities that understand this and commit to using some of the public monies, whether it's state monies or TIF monies or other local monies, in order to enable developers, private developers, to do things that they otherwise can't do, those cities are going to be the ones that are going to succeed and are going to help our state in ways that will make us even more competitive with the rest of the country and the rest of the world. So Bruce, you're one of the key developers in Carmel's redevelopment. Can you talk to us a little about some of your challenges? So basically doing the mixed use coupled with traditional design in a location that hasn't been developed or redeveloped in some time and also in Carmel's case where we really try to make it a destination, something that Carmel can now compete with the rest of the country, the rest of the world, in attracting good people, good talent. Uh, all of that was a very large challenge and a very large risk. Uh, we're happy to have pulled it off, uh, but there were some sleepless nights. At what point did you realize that you might be successful in your developments in Carmel? You know, it all comes together and it works. And people like it and they come to it, they want to lease it, they want to live there, they want to eat there, they want to shop there. 
They want their offices there so that they're working during the day. Carmel's investment in his own future has proven to be a welcome map for numerous large and small businesses. We'll take a look at some of the companies and their impact on the major growth of Carmel. We really like the quality of the workforce available here. For us, it's all about the brain power. In 2004, Allied Solutions chose to make Carmel, Indiana our permanent corporate headquarters. We'll be adding uh, about 82,500 square feet to this headquarters location here in Carmel. Hi, I'm Ron Gifford. The designation of the overlay zone along Meridian Street in Carmel helped protect this area from becoming a district of strip malls and warehouses. Instead, it encouraged the attraction of corporate headquarters, especially in the financial and insurance industries. As a result, Carmel has more than 100 of these businesses located here. Allied Solutions provides insurance, lending, and marketing products to more than 4,000 financial institutions in the U.S. The company has grown through mergers and acquisitions, and one of its principal entities has roots in Carmel dating back to 1978. In 2004, Allied Solutions consolidated its second headquarters operation to Carmel. Pete Hilger is president of Allied Solutions. Allied Solutions is an aggregation of companies, so we had a choice of Plano, Texas, uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, Dakota Dunes. But as an individual who was raised in Carmel, Indiana, um, it's a wholesome place. I raised my family here. Great, great work ethics. The investments that the mayor and, and such have put into the Carmel marketplace really makes us a fantastic place to hire quality employees who are dedicated to a cause, and the community is a great, great uh, entity to be a part of. One well-known early occupant of the Meridian Street Overlay Zone was the world headquarters of Delta Fawcett Company. In 1958, Delta Fawcett opened its first large-scale manufacturing operations in Greensburg, Indiana. As the company grew, it wanted to locate its administrative staff in a more metropolitan area with better access to transportation options for customers and employees. Each year, the company brings in hundreds of its customers to visit its research facilities and product showroom. Jill Enos is Vice President of Human Resources for Delta Fawcett. Carmel's grown and changed a lot. Delta Fawcett Company has grown and changed a lot as well. So it's been very exciting to be on that journey together. We really think Carmel is a great community uh, for our employees to live and work. And we've uh, found, you know, in interacting with employees from all over the country and all over the world, some of the best and brightest, really hidden gems in terms of talent uh, live right here in Carmel. We're really excited to be expanding our headquarters location here in Carmel. The expansion will be home to uh, an innovation R&D center. We'll have a showroom space to bring our customers here to interact with our products and our, our brands. And then we'll also have uh, ample space for our employees. So we've experienced a lot of growth and we're excited to have more space to collaborate and innovate around our products and processes. In 1985, Albert Chen founded Telemon Corporation. The company offers solutions for telecommunication networks, business process outsourcing, energy management, industrial assembly, and telehealth services. Albert's daughter, Stephanie Furman, is the company's chief operating officer. We moved to this facility in Carmel in about 2000, and so we've just kind of grown along with the city. So right now we're up to 1,400 employees. We have nine locations across the country and three internationally. How does being here help you with recruiting for your workforce? Well, Telemon is a primarily service-based business. So because of that, we require a lot of human capital. And I think because of our proximity to so many great universities in the area, we get a lot of access to exactly that. So when you're recruiting your employees, what kind of amenities in this community help bring them here? Well, Carmel is very lucky that we have this Monon trail that runs right through the center of town. Um, a lot of our employees take advantage of that. They take walks during their breaks. Um, we have a bike program here at Telemon that we offer, so employees can check out bikes and bike along the Monon Trail or you know, ride to a local business to have lunch or in, just enjoy the weather. These are just a few examples of major companies with a national and global footprint that have chosen to locate their headquarters in Carmel. They have contributed to the city's rapid growth, but it's the quality of life that the community is intentionally building that keeps them here. We like to get together and go to the city center or Clay Terrace because Clay Terrace has a lot of great shopping and they're always getting more stuff in. They also have a lot of great restaurants, so it's one place where we can go and do a bunch of different stuff, hang out together. I live in an apartment. 
I'm a senior citizen, and I would recommend the downtown for senior citizens so much because you can walk to the library, the high school, shopping, and uh, there's just so much to do. If we can build a city where people can thrive, where people who have choices choose to live their lives, build their businesses, and raise their families, we'll succeed. Thanks to Carmel's early planning, they were able to attract a number of businesses to the area, and those businesses attracted other businesses. This allowed the city to have a relatively low tax base for residential property, while at the same time having the resources to develop amenities that attracted talent and businesses to the area. Education has been the lifeblood of the city's growth and development. In addition to parochial and private school options, their public school system has a population of 16,000 and a graduation rate of more than 97%. Dr. Nick Wall is superintendent of Carmel Clay Schools. What is the school corporation's philosophy of community involvement? Fully engaged. We like to get all constituents and stakeholders involved. So Dr. Wall, students today have varied goals. How do you accommodate so many students with so many different goals? We really believe in problem-based and, and real-life learning situations we can do. At the high school, for example, our DECA program has been very engaged in entrepreneurship. It's all student-run. So they get the real experience of the marketing, the human resources, the operations, the finance, which are the four functions of a business that we talk about in class all the time. We have 30 managers and 180 students from our business classes that take shifts in here and get to work on the, in the cafe, making drinks, running the cash register, and it's just, it all fits together really nicely. Our students also, on the other end, philanthropically, have raised significant amount of money, over $300,000 last year in the dance marathon for Riley's Children's Hospital. So if we're looking at real problem-based, community-based learning, those are two great examples of entrepreneurship and phil philanthropic endeavors by our students, and we're very proud of that. Mayor Ryman created a place for some of the first EMTs and paramedics in Indiana. Healthcare is still a focus throughout the community, with three hospital campuses in Carmel. In turn, these facilities have attracted other medical specialists, as well as several long-term stay hotels. There are also a wide variety of senior care options available, ranging from high-end to basic Medicaid-approved facilities. The Carmel healthcare landscape has really developed over the last 20 years to become a leading reason why business owners choose to locate in Carmel. Carmel offers a variety of medical options designed to address the needs of a diverse population. With three major hospital systems operating in Carmel, more choices and cutting edge technology for the benefit of the medical consumer are sure to continue in the community. To encourage wellness, the Monon Greenway and the Monon Center are open to the public as well as visitors from outside Hamilton County. Living options range from entry level apartments to single family homes, townhouses, high rise condos to executive homes. Multiple housing choices are available for seniors, millennials, families, and empty nesters. I live within a two mile radius of everything that I need. My family can walk or bike or drive to our grocery, our schools, the library, even our jobs. So besides easy access to food, why would someone want to live above a restaurant? It's the convenience. It's the convenience not only to a restaurant, but to the shopping, the dry cleaners, you run into your friends, so you build those relationships, and you have a great synergy among like-minded people. Being a part of a city that's growing is fun and exciting for everybody, certainly for those younger kids. And that's what we need Carmel to continue to do, and I would encourage other cities throughout Indiana to do, because that's what's needed if we're going to keep our kids and attract everybody else's kids to help make our state even better. Attention to detail and care for its residents have both contributed to Carmel's evolution. This community has also created an environment which is attractive to many entrepreneurial businesses. You don't just move to Carmel to live, you move here to thrive. We have all the resources we need to bring Edwin to the market worldwide right here in Indiana. If you're a creative person, you are fed by the creative energy of other creative people. It's a necessity, it's like breathing for us. So yes, it made perfect sense to be around other creative people. Well, we moved to Carmel from out of state because Carmel has a very progressive business mentality. With Carmel's infrastructure improvements, it just keeps getting better and better. These are a few of the many entrepreneurs who have chosen to develop their enterprises here. 
We wanted to find out more about why they made that decision and what it is about the business environment here that contributes to their success. Blair Clark moved to Carmel in 1990. He had been on the road as an entertainer performing all over the world. He and his wife, Heather Ramsey Clark, opened the Midwest School of Voice on Main Street in 2011. The couple also operates a live event space at the warehouse nearby, which they describe as a converted 1950s machine shop turned listening room and art space. The nice thing about Carmel is that they really have, have spent the money and put the investment and put the time in um, to try to draw more of an arts community to the area. Uh, and that's what drew us here. I live, you know, right on Main Street, so it's just great. Uh, I walk down the street and you're seeing kids going up and down the Monon, bicycles, people walking by. Uh, it's just a, a great hustle bustle, but it's, it's very calm. It's very, uh, it's very peaceful. It's just a real nice community and, and uh, uh, I, I love it here. Matt Macbeth has a background in engineering, product development, and tech startups which he previously put to work for Klipsch and Hillrom, as well as some of his own companies right here in Indiana. Some of Matt's inventions, such as the Izon Wi-Fi video monitor, have sold hundreds of thousands of units through the largest retail chains in the world. Matt's new company, PyLab, based in the Arts and Design District in Carmel, has set out to change the face of technology, the Internet of Things, and education with Edwin the Duck. So Matt, who or what is Edwin the Duck? This is a child's new companion to teach letters, numbers, shapes, and colors to play together, to learn together, and grow, grow together. So what's the benefit of developing Edwin in Carmel, Indiana? Uh, the, the reason we chose to develop Edwin here is we're actually from here. We um, live right in the area. We can walk to work. We can bike to work. But what we also found is we have a great tech community here. We can develop all of Edwin's materials, his hardware, his firmware, and his software right here in Carmel, Indiana. Jane Coates Eckert and Diane Wright opened Coates Wright Arts and Design at the Indiana Design Center in 2011. They offer traditional and modern paintings and sculpture by regionally and nationally recognized artists as well as interior design consultation services. How does being in the Design Center help your business? Everything I need as a designer, resource-wise, is in this building. And so it's, it's a, a match made in heaven. We encourage one another in our creative efforts. And so um, we're very happy to be here. It's a thriving sub-community just within this building in the Design District. Five Medicom is a marketing communication firm specializing in scientific and technical products. Their business relocated to Carmel after having been in two other locations in the Indianapolis region. Chris Worthwine leads the company. Well, I've lived in Carmel since 1988, and one thing that we especially like about Carmel as a location for the business is what it does for our brand. We work with technical and scientific companies. It's a modern concept. And I think Carmel as a location for a business actually fits that brand very nicely. Overall, we're very happy to be located here. Tatiana Komarova is a native of far eastern Russia who relocated to the United States in 1997 with only two suitcases, one full of books, the other full of lesson plans. A lifelong educator, she is now executive director of the International Talent Academy. Tatiana teaches a wide variety of classes with special emphasis on early brain and talent development in children. We believe that confidence is the, one of the most important life skills. Confidence comes with a great knowledge on any subject, a good ability to speak and present yourself, and the ability to communicate your needs to other people. We teach all these skills in our programs. Carmel's emphasis on creating a walkable, family-friendly community and encouraging the arts and education has served to attract many entrepreneurs. We have examined this phenomenal growth in Carmel since its humble beginnings and been able to see the planning that has allowed this rapid growth in such an orderly fashion. We've looked at some of the city's major employers, quality of life amenities, and entrepreneurial businesses which are thriving. When you first took office here, you had the basic infrastructure in place, but you had a unique opportunity with the burgeoning population and with the corporate headquarters that located here 
So what has been your guiding principle as you've progressed to build what is, in many ways, the city of tomorrow? Cities only get one chance to do it right or do it wrong, and it really falls to our generation to build a city of the future, to build a beautiful city that's competitive. We don't have mountains and we don't have oceans and not the best weather here in Indiana, so we really have to focus on the built environment, building a city where people can thrive with parks and trails and cultural amenities, a walkable pedestrian and friendly downtown and if we do that we'll be able to compete with some of the best places anywhere. You've been criticized for taking on too much debt for the community. How do you respond to your critics? Debt's relevant only in regards to to revenue and we watch those ratios very carefully. Um, Debt's a relatively small percentage of our annual revenue. And you know, we're at historic low interest rates too. Now's the time to go borrow that money and get our infrastructure that we need, good roads and parks and trails in place. Because as the city develops more, it only becomes more and more expensive. Interest rates will probably go up. We've been very careful to make sure our debt stays low. As a result, we have some of the lowest tax rates in Indiana and actually anywhere in the United States. So what are your ultimate goals for Carmel? I suppose our ultimate goal for Carmo is just to make it one of the most beautiful places anywhere in the world for people to live. People have choices when they choose where they're going to spend their lives and raise their families, and we want that choice to be Carmel, Indiana. Thank you, Mayor Brannard. We um, had a wonderful visit to Carmel, and we look forward to seeing what you do with your blank canvas in the next few years. Support for Extraordinary Indiana comes from Duke Energy, working with local and state economic development partners to attract businesses, create jobs, and strengthen the community. Learn more at duke-energy.com slash for you.